Hello ladies and Jormai 49ers, and welcome to the Jormai 50 channel. If you don't know who I am, my main channel is Jormai 49. I make video essays. Uh, I think they're pretty solid, at least in terms of scripting and research. I talk about internet dramas and random people who have turned out to be degenerates. I, I don't know. Uh, to all the people who do know me from my main channel, hello. F fancy seeing you here. You probably didn't expect something like this to happen for a little while, because usually people's egos don't get big enough to make a second channel until their audience gets, you know, pretty big. And, and mine is... Uh, uh, it, it could be bigger. But don't worry, I, I promise there's a really solid reason for me to need to make a new channel this early into my online career. I mean, as I probably mentioned a little bit too much on the main channel, I, I do go on Twitter a lot to my own detriment. But, uh, there's always a drama going on that I want to talk about, but not something that's worth making a full-fledged video essay on, because, I mean, you guys might think they're stupid with the Wojaks and the emojis and the gifs and whatnot, but they actually do take me a really long time to make, especially the research and the scripting and making sure I don't get stuff wrong, so... Uh, yeah, this will just be like my place for covering less serious stuff where there's not really enough to make into a full video essay or I just don't feel like it's important enough. I'm not a million percent sure what I want to do with this channel, but I do have a couple video ideas that might be coming down the pipeline that I think you guys will probably enjoy. Um, I scripted a whole video for the main channel about furry political extremists, but it was just too goofy to do on that channel. Like, I, I kept wanting to script in more and more jokes, and then I realized that the whole video was becoming a joke. Although the draw my haters out there would probably say, All your videos are jokes. And to that I just have to say, take, take it back. That hurts my feelings. Oh, and before you say anything about it, if you're here from Tom Dark's channel, yeah, I know, he just posted a video about furry political extremists. Trust me, I know it sounds literally insane, but I actually messaged him about the thumbnail I was gonna make for that video, and he said, no way, I just made a video about this too, so... It r really was just a coincidence that we both ended up making videos about furry political extremists within, like, a week of each other. I, I, I promise. Uh, regardless, I know this intro is getting kind of long. It's uh, it's almost like Tour My 49 intro long. Super, Super meta, meta self meta burn. burn. So let's just cut right to the chase because this channel isn't supposed to have super long videos on it and I'm not going to go super in depth on stuff. So what are we here to talk about today? Well, recently I've been noticing a kind of disturbing trend on Twitter, and that is the willingness of people to celebrate the death of other people who they disagree with. Now don't get me wrong, I know death threats on Twitter are nothing new, but I've just personally never seen it on this scale and this widely celebrated by people. Now to all my non-terminally online people out there, well, first of all, congratulations. I hope you are enjoying your life. Uh, second, uh, this might sound like a lot of gobbledygook to you. I'll do my best to explain who these people are, but you know, this isn't a video essay or something, so uh, I'll, I'll probably keep it brief. But the situation I specifically wanted to talk about today is that of Ian Miles Chong, someone who is rather infamous on Twitter. He is a Malaysian right-wing social media activist slash reactionary rage baiter slash troll, I, a grifter person. I don't exactly really know even how to describe him because his online activity is just so insane that it's hard to really classify it. Uh, his Twitter bio, which is his biggest platform by the way, is I say the quiet part out loud, so we can kind of already tell the type of person we're dealing with. He also writes for the news site Rebel News, so you might get another hint at who he is from that. Now he mostly spends his days spamming out controversial statements that uh, many people decry as racist or homophobic in an effort to get a lot of engagement and basically just make a ton of money off of ads on Twitter, because you can do that now. Just to give you all a bit of an example, I've picked out three out of the dozens of tweets that he has put out in just the last 24 hours. Uh, first of all, he shills Tucker Carlson. Next, he says, no lady boys in the women's room. Uh, and then he refers to African men coming to Europe as an invasion that should be prioritized over Russia invading Ukraine. <laughs> okay. But what many people might not know is t Twitter isn't actually the beginning of Ian Miles Chong's online career. In fact, 
In the past, he has been called the most influential Reddit user to ever suffer the spam ban hammer. <laughs> uh, and what that means is that uh, Chong was actually really powerful on Reddit. He had moderator positions on some of the biggest subreddits on the entire site. R slash WTF, R slash Ask Reddit, R slash Politics, all those. He was a mod. And each of those has over a million subscribers, if you don't really know. Uh, he also had accumulated over... 350,000 karma. Oh my lord. Uh, and this actually got him a job at a company called Global Post. Their agreement was basically that he would post their content to Reddit, you know, since he was... He was the most powerful Redditor on planet Earth! Uh, but that's actually against Reddit's terms of service, so yeah, he actually, he got banned for that. And, you know, it, it might sound kind of funny, because his, uh, his position was basically just a Reddit mod, but you can already see that he's ready to sell the integrity of his position for money. He's also caught a pretty decent amount of flack over the years for the way he reacts to people he disagrees with. Uh, as an example of this, back during the Gamergate era, uh, Ian was surprisingly on the anti-Gamergate side, which means he was fighting against all the people who were saying everything was becoming too PC. Uh, and one of the ways that our darling activist decided to go about this was just by accusing someone who supported Gamergate of being a rapist. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? His evidence for this was that the person may or may not have owned an alt Reddit account, which may or may not have been defending a rapist. Now, there have also been multiple dramas in the past where it's been said that he swatted his opponents, you know, called the police on them and tried to get them to raid their house. Specifically, one of these swattings was in response to someone supposedly telling him that they were going to send quote-unquote Bitcoin assassins to murder him. Uh, except for this was literally just a, a troll attempt, and it was not even the person who he thought it was, and so he swatted someone for no reason at all. Uh, he, he also had incorrect information, so he actually swatted the guy's dad, n not even him. Overall, I won't be going any deeper into Ian's transgressions, because I think it's pretty clear the reasons why people hate him. I mean, he's a grifter, he's a rage baiter, and he doesn't really seem to care if what he says is consistent or even true. And of course, with that description, you could tell he's perfect for political Twitter. And when I say perfect, I really do mean it. When the very first earnings were posted, when people who had Twitter Blue started making money off of ads, off of their tweets that got a lot of engagement, Ian posted that he had earned over $16,000 just off of tweeting. So yeah, after his past as a morally bankrupt Reddit moderator and a slanderous anti-gamergate poster, he ventured into the realm of politics, and it is there that he is infamous to this very day. But why exactly are we talking about him? Well, I mean, beyond the fact that, <laughs> you know, Redditor, <laughs> funny. Well, it's because recently there are some pretty crazy rumors going around about Ian Maus Chung, and while I don't really think any of them are true, because he's continued posting, of course, I think it's interesting to look at the reaction to them. The rumors started with a tweet made just a couple days ago with over 20 million views on it. It reads, quote, It might be all over for Ian Miles Chong. One of the biggest media sites in Malaysia is now publishing calls to charge him with sedition. I pray that at Elon Musk will chopper him out of Kuala Lumpur before it's too late. And just like the vast majority of awesome Twitter dramas, this story is based on a kernel of truth but is largely false. The Malaysian media company in question, New Straits Times, has indeed posted an article about Ian Miles Chung, but the purpose of the article is actually just to document the massive backlash that he's facing on Twitter right now due to his vehement support of Israel. It talks about how people are realizing en masse that Ian Miles Chong is a massive grifter who lives in Malaysia but talks about Western issues because he knows that none of the things he talks about will actually have an effect on his life so he can just rage bait all he wants and it'll never come back to him. The idea that he would be charged with sedition by the Malaysian government is also just something that the article quotes from a Twitter post. They also mention immediately after that there would probably be legal issues with charging him with sedition, so yeah. That's not to say that it could never happen, because the Malaysian government actually does have a history of arresting people for making statements, especially pro-Israel statements. But also, it's pretty clear that the original tweet took the article way out of context. Imagine my shock. 
But all the many Ian Wells Chong haters out there, and there are many, decided to take this idea and absolutely run away with it. Not only did everyone collectively decide that him being arrested was now a guaranteed fact, they also decided that his sentence would definitely be the death penalty. <laughs> Now look, I'm against cringe political grifting on Twitter as much as the next guy, but death is kinda crazy. <laughs> I'd like to go through some of these tweets with y'all, just cause they're a little bit funny. But also just because it's absolutely insane to me how readily these people accept rumors of someone's death. I mean, these Twitter users are absolutely giddy. The amount of posts that I saw with the caption, Ian Miles Chong got the death sentence or Ian Miles Chong public execution and it's just some NBA player like celebrating really intensely was insane. Shame on y'all for spreading misinformation about Ian Miles Chong. Fake death reports aren't fucking funny. My hopes were so high and the motherfucker's still tweeting. Ian Miles Chong was sentenced to death? It looks like reports of Ian Miles Chong's death may be correct. Okay, see this one? This one is funny. Ian Miles Chong live death. Breaking! Ian Miles Chong is drowned to death in a bathtub filled with his own diarrhea. M Malaysian official referred to the scene as a tub girl scenario. He was 35 years old. <laughs> Just found out Ian Miles Chung might be getting arrested and executed, and honestly, I think I was too harsh on the death penalty. You go, girl. Look, everyone, I get it. It's fun to poke fun at people, especially when those people make a mockery of everything that we care about, and, you know, are honestly just kind of really cringe and kind of stupid. But, I mean, come on. I think the worst part of this to me is that, you know, you kind of can really get a feel for how these people are in, in real life just from the way they tweet about this. And maybe it's because I just came back from the gym and, you know, I got that pump, I got that alpha dog mentality. I got, I feel like I could really, like, take on a guy right now, like, like really take him, you know, like take him, like, really hard. But I mean, like, you know what I'm saying, right? The contrast between these people's online personas and their real life selves is just, it's gotta be so insane. Actively celebrating someone's death on Twitter versus probably being too afraid to ask for extra ketchup at the McDonald's is becoming the new norm for our generation. And like I said, it's funny in moderation. I always actually end up saying this at the end of my videos in the conclusion. Things can be fun in moderation, things can be good in moderation. But when you get to the point where you're talking about like, oh, maybe the death penalty's not so bad after all, it, it's Twitter, you know? Like, block him, or better yet, just delete the app and go outside. I know I'm a huge hypocrite for saying this, but if someone's affecting you so badly you wish for their death, you can just not look at their tweets. If you're being harassed, that's one thing. But Ian Miles Chong's posts don't really count as harassment. They're just kind of dog shit. Again, kind of pointless video, but that's kind of the objective of this channel. I wanted to talk about this guy once I found out he was a Reddit moderator, and also I saw some of the tweets about his death. But I can't say there's anything for us to learn here. I mean, this is really just popcorn. I hope it was entertaining. If you guys have any thoughts, leave them in the comments. If you want the videos to be longer, if you want them to be shorter, if you want me to talk about a specific topic, I can definitely do that because this video took like zero effort <laughs> at all. Oh, and if you're interested in longer form content where I don't give my doo-doo opinion, you can go over to the Jormai49 channel, watch my video essays over there. They're much higher quality than this, I can guarantee you. And my new video that should be coming out this weekend is going to have much higher production value than all of my other videos put together. So stay tuned for that. As always, stay safe Jormai49ers and Jormai50ers, but I'm just going to call you all Jormai49ers. Okay, goodbye. What a ride.